here I am living in the house with him, sharing a house with him, and he's going to tell me all these great stories. And I would say, so John Ford, what was, well, he was a real nice fella, and he knew exactly what he wanted. <laughs> yep. Hi, I'm Rob Ward. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. We have been doing these shows for a long time. In fact, about six years ago, we had a guest on here who told some funny stories. He was in a couple of the Gunsmoke movies, and he's done Longmire now and Justified. He was just amazing in that Supernatural and The Boys. You know who I'm talking about. Mr. Jim Beaver. Come on in, Jim. <laughs> What is this show? Look at it. <laughs> Only the greatest movie ever made. And you know, I was there when they were shooting that. That's right. That's right. I saw it. I saw a post of yours about that. Oh gosh, He's, you got to stay up with me. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah. one of my most cherished moments. Oh, I, I can only imagine. And you know who I met? Hank Worden, who we're going to hear all about Hank Worden because they were roommates. Hank Worden, old Moe's. I'm sorry we don't have a rocking chair for you, but we do have a chair, so <laughs> have, have a seat. Thank you. Glad Thank you're you. here, Jim. I'm glad to be here. Well, you have been so, so very busy. It's insane uh, and, and unexplainable. No, the talent. <laughs> talent rises, and so uh, I think that's why you're always working, not just as an actor, but as a writer, You've done plays, you're, you're all over. You're, you're so prolific, but I want to know how you became a roommate with Hank Worden. <laughs> well, um, I, w I, was, I was a huge movie fan as a kid. And I had this list of actors that I liked, and I would watch everything they were in. I would go through the TV guide every week and, and look for anything that certain people were in, and Hank was one of those people. I had seen him in The, the Searchers, I'd seen him in The Alamo, and, and, and dozens of other things. And, uh, but I didn't know his name. And, uh, uh, but by watching movie after movie after movie and seeing him in them, I finally caught the credits one time, mm -hmm. that, and he had a big enough part that he was listed in the credits, so I found his name. I wrote him a fan letter. Now, I was growing up outside Dallas, um, and this was in the 60s. I wrote him a fan letter. He wrote me back, sent me some pictures, wrote me a long three, four-page letter. Handwritten. Handwritten, yeah. And, uh, uh, and I had written him in Kara Screen Actors Guild, and, uh, but he had put his home address on the envelope. And I went, well, that's an invitation. Uh, <laughs> so you packed your bags and moved in with well, him. Wait exactly. a minute. <laughs> yeah. That's the short version. The, uh, I wrote him back. We established this correspondence all through the rest of my high school days. Then in 68, um, I uh, joined the Marines, and I was stationed in San Diego. And Hank and I still had this, this uh, correspondence relationship. And one day... Out of the blue, I get a call from the uh, first sergeant's office, and he's, uh, uh, he says, there's a guy on the phone wants to talk to you. I come pick up the phone, and it's Hank, and he's asking if I mind if he and his wife Louise drive down from L.A. to San Diego and spend the day with me. And I thought, I've died and gone to heaven because, <laughs> in my mind, Hank Worden was as big a movie star as John Wayne or or uh, Randolph Scott. I I was I was so starstruck, but I was particularly starstruck by Hank because mm -hmm. he was so uh, gracious and so outgoing. Uh, to He's me. always going, thank you kindly. Yeah, thank you kindly. His famous line from the Searchers: Hank and Louise came down. I was confined to base because I had done something naughty. <laughs> and, uh, but they were fine. Uh, we just walked around the base and, and, and talked. And then 
uh, whenever I was I had a, a weekend off or something, they would have me up to their place in in Brentwood. While I was in Vietnam, uh, I got a package, and it was a whole selection of photographs and autographs. Hank was in uh, Durango, I think, filming uh, Big Jake. Mm -hmm. And he had gone around on his own. I hadn't asked for this. He'd gone around to the entire cast and crew and gotten autographs from everybody. And uh, a beautiful photo of him and Maureen O'Hara and John Wayne on the set, and uh, which hangs in my hall now. And uh, sent this to me in Vietnam, and I, oh man, I was the envy of everybody mm -hmm. in my outfit. And then a few years later, uh, I came out to L.A. Uh, after I was out of the service to uh, to work on a book, and uh, I was living, I was renting a room in a frat house at USC, uh, which in the summer because they were kind of half shut down in the summer. It was. It was worse than Vietnam. Uh, <laughs> it was a horrible, horrible place to live. And I was on the phone talking to Hank, and I said, man, I can't sleep here because they're partying all night long. And, uh, uh, and he said, well, uh, by this time his wife Louise was gone, and he said, I got a hole downstairs here in the house, and nobody's in it. Why don't you just come out here? And uh, so I did, and I, I lived it his place in Brentwood for the next four years. And, uh, what years were those? That, was, that would have been 80, 83 to 87. Well, uh, he was coming to the Golden Boot Awards at that time. Did you come yeah. to any of them too? Uh, I, the first Golden Boot Awards I went to was right after, it was probably 93, 94. I, I had, uh, but it wasn't with, Hank. Because he, uh, he sat at our table a couple of yeah. times. He was just a charming, wonderful oh, guy. Oh, he was, he was, he was, And you he's know. so different. To, I mean, he, his rhythm of speaking and oh, the yeah. way he was. His voice. Uh, uh, um, unique. I, I spoke at his memorial service, and I, I remember uh, uh, speaking about this, this kind of uh, uh, voice he had, which I, I described as, uh, honey mixed with distant thunder. Uh, uh, it was such a it was such a lovely voice. He was such a lovely man. Now I had this whole other side to my life as a film historian, and and you I, you wrote because I have issues of films in review that you wrote a lot of long lot of time film. ago. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I was, an old guy. I, yeah, well, you, <laughs> I uh, I won't argue. Uh, uh, so fast. Hank was Hank was. Uh, in in some ways, I thought, here I am living in the house with him, sharing a house with him, and he's going to tell me all these great stories. And I would say, so, John Ford, what was, well, he was a real nice fella, and he knew exactly what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, he did tell me some great <laughs> stories. And uh, did you meet his circle of friends? A lot of them at I, this time. Uh, uh, not a lot. Uh, I remember I met Dobie Carey, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and it was funny because we were at, you know, Hank was of an age where a lot of his colleagues and friends were were passing away, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I uh, I spent a lot of time uh, going to funerals with Hank. And, uh, it gets worse, doesn't it? It does. It does, because now it's my friends and colleagues. Mm -hmm. But I remember we went to Chuck Roberson's funeral. We went to Lee Van Cleef's. And I remember uh, um, one, of, one of Hank's headshots was shot by Lee Van Cleef, which I always <laughs> thought was pretty cool. But we were, we were at that funeral, and Dobie Carey came up to me and, and thanked me for taking care of Hank. And I was mm -hmm. like... He's taking care of me, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was, Hank ended up being like a grandfather to yeah, me. Very, very special. He, because uh, Dobe and Marilyn ended up moving to Durango, mm -hmm. and I went up there for a festival with Hank and Charlie Deercop mm -hmm. were up there. We got pictures of, even Marty Cove went. They did that every year for uh -huh. like several years, and, and yeah. Hank was just such a pleasure always to be with. Yeah. Now, let me, let me shift gears here a okay. little bit to talk about 
your role in Justified because it's ironic. He, he was the bad guy that you don't know because his character's introduced seasons before the story arc that you're the, revealed as this uh, terrible guy <laughs> who, with a sense of humor. But what's so great about that show, and I don't know that anybody else could do this, your delivery of those eloquent lines that they give you for your character, the rhythm and the difficulty to say those, but to make them just natural, is a unique gift that you have. Well, thank you. I, I, the truth is... See, now he's tongue-tied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I, I, I think about that. I, I never, I, you know, I studied acting in college uh, to a certain extent. Uh, but my sense of it is that if you do as I've done most of my life and watch three or four hundred movies a year, you're going to learn a little bit about acting because you're going to see so much of it. And I suspect any, any ability I have comes from, uh, uh, sheer imitation of people who are a lot better at it. Who were some of your favorites then? Uh, well, I had a wide range. Uh, John Wayne was always my favorite actor, uh, 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 starting from 11, 12 years old. Uh, uh, but Lawrence Olivier, uh, mm. Randolph Scott, Robert Mitchum, uh, Catherine Hepburn, uh, uh, Groucho Marx. I mean, these are people <laughs> I, I think they're, they're, they range very widely, but they're all at the top of what they do. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, I just, I love watching good actors, and uh, oh boy, do I steal stuff. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, well, that's what good actors do. They, they shake, shape it and make it their own. And on, on Deadwood, your Whitney Ellsworth character, which you had a lot of interesting dialogue in that, uh, also flowed as if it were natural. But on, on Deadwood, you're the big Superman buff. I know you've been working for 50 years on trying to write this book on George Reeves. Who named you Whitney Ellsworth, the producer of the Superman show in that series? Well, uh, when, I started, when I started shooting Deadwood, I, Ellsworth only had one name. He was just Ellsworth. And I, I went to David Milch, the uh, creator, one day, and I said, so what's Ellsworth's first name? And he said, maybe it's Ellsworth. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, that's David. He, he, and he just walked off like, uh, I don't need to fill you in on stuff. Uh, and so he was just Ellsworth. And I never knew if it was his first name or his last name until the end of the second season when uh, Ellsworth got married. Oh, well, he had to have a first name. And they were going to shoot the wedding ceremony and script came out and they had, David had given Ellsworth a first name. I don't remember what it was, but I had been working for, as you say, about 180 <laughs> years on this biography. Longer of, than I thought then. Of George Reeves, who had played Superman in the 50s. The producer of that show was named Whitney Ellsworth. And so I went to David Milch and said, look, would you mind if we called him Whitney? And he said, Fine with me. And so uh, he became uh, Whitney Conway Ellsworth. And uh, I've had to answer questions like this for the last 20 years. <laughs> well, you better finish that book, too, then. Yeah. So how, how far along is the book? How long is the how book? How far along are you oh, on it? Well, I know it must be really long by now. I mean, it's, it's, I, I'm up around 90,000 words, and I'm up to 1939. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, Gone with the Wind, that's several gone more with the wind. hundred yeah. pages probably. Yeah, I've been, I've, been, I've been researching and or writing since 1978. And, uh, but I've only been writing since about 2020. Mm. So uh, it, it's, it's coming along slowly but massively. I'll say <laughs> and, uh, uh, well, when I started it, I was 28 years old. What is it that drove you to the topic of George Reeves? Well, I mean, I grew up on the Superman show. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Uh, and I was kind of Well, you grew up on Winky Dink, too, but you're not going to write a Winky Dink book. <laughs> well, that was the thing. I mean, uh, with, with, with George Reeves, you had not only was he Superman, a guy who got to fly around and, and uh, 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 be really cool, but you had this sort of uh, unknown factor as to how the actor died and, and uh, uh, supposedly some kind of mystery about that. And it was vaguely intriguing, but I was, you mentioned Films and Review, the magazine I worked for uh, years and years ago. Um, I was asked to write an article on Reeves, and I thought, yeah, I can do that. So I started researching, and the more I researched, the more I thought, this is a bigger story than a 10-page article. Did you ever do a 10-page article about no, Reeves? Huh. No. It just, I, I, at some point I went... You, know, I, you could only get up to like 1932 at that time. Right, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's coming along. I'm just, I'm waiting until everybody who knows who he was is dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, we probably don't have much longer to go. <laughs> well, let's talk about something that is more recent, mm -hmm. like Longmire. That's Walmart. a terrific show, too. How did you yeah. get hooked up in that? There was a, a, a major shift in my career when Deadwood happened. Mm -hmm. uh, just before Deadwood, I was, for the first time in my life, thinking, I might have to do something else. I, I got a brand new baby. I, I got no, I'm not making enough. I got to figure somehow to make an income. Deadwood came along, changed all of that. And as a result of Deadwood, I began to get straight offers for mm -hmm. jobs, which was, that had just never happened. And, uh, and Longmire was one of those. Mm -hmm. They just called up and said, uh, come do this. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an interesting situation. The character was uh, a guy who had, ultimately it turned out he committed a murder uh, in order to, uh, to, to help his wife who was dying of cancer. My wife, Cecily, had just died of cancer uh, 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 shortly before that. And, um, uh, and so it was, it was one of those things where life and uh, drama come together in a way that you don't necessarily want, but you also feel like you've got, you've got a little extra edge on how to approach this. And um, I've had that happen uh, something like three times uh, 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 in the years. I don't want to sit too close there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's uh, uh, it, it's a it's a gift to me to be able to take something horrible and make something a little good, mm -hmm. a little helpful, a little entertaining, a little uh, dramatic out it, of it's, it. It's working, whatever it is, wherever you pull it from. What I remember most about Longmire, though, was I had a had a, a fight scene with Robert Taylor. Uh, the new one, not the old one. Um, uh, and um, uh, I remember it was it was a lot of fun. We worked on it really well. And then and the next day, I flew home. Then and the next day, uh, my entire arm was covered in bruises. And I was like, "Where did those come from?" And then I remembered that he had yanked me out of this room. And uh, I've been hurt a few times doing stunts, but I'd never been completely. It looked like I was tattooed, and uh, uh, but that was a, that was it was a short experience, really, uh, uh, brief. But I really enjoyed it. Great company, great people, mm -hmm. and uh, those are well well written too. Yeah. The supernatural connection with the boys that yeah. is an unusual situation that's happening. How did that come about? Well, on on Supernatural, which we just finished, I guess last year. Uh, 15 seasons, who gets that? <laughs> uh, I, I played a character named Bobby Singer, uh, who's a demon hunter, and as one is. And, uh, and the joke was that the executive producer of the show was named Robert Singer, who's a, a, a well-known producer, but he didn't have anything to do with the character being named that and was very unhappy about it because all his <laughs> friends said, you named a character after yourself? <laughs> and, uh, and he said, no, no, I wasn't there that week and somebody, uh. So 
that show was created by Eric Kripke, who is now the uh, creator and producer of the Amazon series, The Boys. And Eric and I get along really well. And he, for some reason, puts me in just about everything he does. And he put me in The Boys, and I guess he thought it would be funny if I had the same name. So I'm Robert Singer. <laughs> but you're going Secretary to be running for president. I'm running for president. <laughs> I have a bus with my picture on it. It's, did, did you drive that here today? No, I didn't. I didn't. It's in the shop. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, Eric really likes to, uh, little in jokes for the fans. And so now he's got all these supernatural fans thinking, is this the same character? Because he used to be this drunken bum from South Dakota, but now he's running for president. Could it be the same? <laughs> well, these days, I guess it probably could. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, and, and he's keeping me busy there, you know. Well, that sure is nice to, to be working all the time. And, and you have several hundred credits now, too. Yeah, what's that about? That's wonderful. It means we want this guy. He must hit his mark and know his lines and delivers them well. And that's what you've done here today. Uh, and I want to thank him for coming back again. Jim has been a guest before when we were just in the coffee shop. Remember that? Yeah. How yeah. intimate that was? Yeah. Is this nice, though? With I, the miss that. I miss that. I miss that intimacy. <laughs> well, it's been closed down because of COVID, and it yeah. hasn't opened up again yet. Well, so or, or I would take you to lunch after this. So. <laughs> did Thank you ever you. work with uh, L.Q. Jones or Bo Hopkins? I did not. I uh, I managed to become Facebook friends with Bo, but I never met him. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and uh, L.Q. I you know I just admired from a distance. Mm -hmm. Never uh, never got to meet either one of them. Two talented guys yeah. Uh, yeah. who. From the Wild Bunch. Yeah. There's a great movie too. That with for me, I, you've got your Searchers T-shirt on, but <laughs> the Searchers and the Wild Bunch are like one and two for me, and it switches back and forth. Well, what a great argument. Yeah, good. You know, well, you are the true film buff, and I thought Quentin Tarantino was, but uh, <laughs> but you. He I, learned I, a I, lot from me. <laughs> I see you. He did. I bet he devoured all your articles. And Jim posts on Facebook a movie that he's seen like every day for the year. Here's the movies that I've seen this past year. And uh, just like uh, such a diverse quality. Do you know who Robert Horner is? I'm sorry? Robert Horner? I'm afraid I don't. Oh, he was like the Ed Wood of B-Westerns. Oh, okay. Uh, so he's somebody to, to look up. So uh, well, that's, I'll do that. it's an interesting uh, topic to study. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought up somebody I never heard of. Okay, well, <laughs> that's, our, that's our job here. Proves me to be the expert you claim I am. Westerns. <laughs> well, he's still got a lot of learning to do, but let's give him a big hand for sharing what he does know Thank today. You. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Great.